<laughs> are, are, are we serious? What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lotus Lost Accord, the one who knows best. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about why a lot of Tekken 8 fans are pissed right now and why the Tekken uh, 8 game is being criticized and basically why there's members of the community who are up in arms and everyone else is giving their opinions and their input and their insight on this. And I figured I would contribute my two cents and my thoughts on this as well. Uh, if you're not aware of what I'm talking about based on the title or thumbnail of this intro, basically, as you're all aware or probably aware, uh, the, we just got the release of the latest patch for Tekken 8, that's version 1.08. And alongside this patch, we also got the brand new release of Heihachi Mishima as the latest DLC character who looks very cool and very powerful, uh, as well as a brand new stage known as Genmanji Temple that released alongside him. And it's very common in these in, in fighting games and in Tekken for a brand new stage to release uh, alongside the release of a brand new character. And Typically, the way it works is that you can buy the stage separately, you can buy the character separately. However, normally, if you buy the season pass that these games typically have, uh, you get the stage alongside the release of the character basically as a bonus or free of charge. Um, that is not the case this time around. And we're going to take a look at some tweets and everything like that, um, talking a bit about this. But basically, uh, you do not get the brand new stage um, if you are somebody who owns the season pass for Tekken 8. So whether you bought the season pass separately, whether you bought the standard, uh, deluxe, ultimate, collector's edition, the three big $300 one like I bought, you know what I'm saying? Cause I've been called a shill, Bandai Namco don't give me nothing. I pay, like I've, I've gotten stuff for free at times when it comes to Tekken, I, this all came out of my own pockets. Let's get that clear first and foremost, you know what I'm saying? So when I give my pain on something, it's completely unfiltered and genuine. Regardless, all jokes aside, uh, everybody, no matter what, version of the game you own or what season pass has to pay for the DLC stage. Now, I'm somebody who has been vocal before saying that I understand why things cost money and et cetera, et cetera, and a, and a, and a certain sense of entitlement. We gonna get more into my thoughts and opinions, but I think that this is a bit of a different case. But let's take a look at some of these tweets and jump into things. So if I come over to my monitor, you can see the first tweet I saw about this because I covered the patch in my most recent video. I need I didn't even know this. I didn't even realize this until later during my stream because I recorded that live on stream. People were coming in telling me about it. And I was like, I didn't even I didn't even peep that because I didn't play Tekken last night. I was doing my subathon thing. I was playing other games, whatever. So I didn't even I didn't even know that you didn't get the stage until after I'd already uploaded and posted that video. But this tweet from Roman Jelly reads: Not including the new stage for the season pass holders and paywalling it for five dollars is a scummy move. Unbelievably disappointed. One step forward, two steps back. And I'll say that I agree with this. I do think it is a little bit scummy and underhanded to not include the stage. Again, I'm somebody who has been vocal before about. You know, I feel like a lot of people are very entitled and, you know, I can't tell somebody what their money is worth, what should cost this or that to them and how they feel that they should be able to value their dollar. Um, but here's the difference between this and then like a different microtransaction, like selling a character or a bonus content as a, as a story or w whatever the case may be, right? Fight pass, whatever. The reason this is different is because there's already a precedent that 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 has dictated or shown that these stages usually come with this pass. And I've seen a lot of pushback on this of people like defending Bandai Namco and saying, well, did, did it say that it was going to come with the stages? It was called a character pass for a reason. And again, that's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? This is just a little underhanded. You know what I'm saying? I don't think this is the biggest deal in the world, but I do think it's a little scummy. You know what I'm saying? I, I do think that we have already shown that historically when you get these season passes, whatever stage comes alongside these new characters, you get that included as well. And even though the stages have been sold separately in the past or it's in the past, not past, but separately in the past with a T at the end, uh, if you have the past, you get the character in the stage. And I think the current climate and landscape with Tekken and microtransactions and DLC and everything like that, like it's, it's kind of already, it's a touchy subject. Things are already, you know what I'm saying? Like they've already been under fire. They've already been criticized. People are already talking a lot about the microtransactions, the lackluster fight pass, the cost of these games and DLC and everything like that. So it's like in the midst of all that, you guys decide to make what I guess is a small change, but considering the context and the climate, a, a, a pretty big change to how you normally conduct the business with these games. Now, I know with what I've said, people also say, well, historically, in the past, traditionally, we talk about precedents. Everything that was included in the game used to be on the disc. There was no DLC. And like we can that's a whole other conversation, because like I feel like, you know, while there are some games that come out as incomplete and people or developers and companies are like 
putting stuff behind a paywall that they probably could have included on the disc. I am a firm believer that we are in fact getting bonus stuff, extra characters, extra stages, extra content that would have just not been the game if it wasn't sold later on as DLC, because even though it might've been planned before the game release, it's like, okay, at some point the game has to get out and what's on the disc is on the disc. And then we'll add in more stuff later because that's just the nature of the industry now. Um, again, that's another conversation. We could have that at some point, but I digress. So we saw this tweet from Roman Jelly. I agree. I think it's a bit scummy. I think it's underhanded whatever all right we have some other players and uh, community members chiming in here we have this tweet from speed kicks that says uh stages uh been free with the past as long as the passes have existed pretty stupid greed move from namco if this isn't a bug um i think enough time has passed now to where we realize that this is not a bug this was a an intentional uh, business decision from bandai namco and you know i like to give people the benefit of the doubt at times um and I don't want to be overly critical, but I do feel like criticism is warranted, uh, particularly in situations like this. I don't really know where to point the finger. Is it Bandai Namco? I think it is. Is it the Tekken team in specific? Who has the power, the pool in the situation? Um, I, I think it is probably Namco who is ultimately making the, 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 the decision when it comes to uh, selling this. But I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, regardless, it's very clear that a lot of people uh, feel strongly about this. And Speed Kicks himself says that he's not paying for this if it's intentional and he doesn't think that anyone should. And I haven't bought the stage for myself either. And it really sucks because I think the stage is sick. I think it's probably the coolest stage in the game. You know what I'm saying? To me, it might be my favorite stage in the game now. But I'm going to vote with my wallet as, as well. And I'm going to hold off and refrain from buying it because... I think it's pretty dumb that they're doing it this way. And then we have a reply from somebody named Del Walker who says, as a developer, I don't think it is bad to paywall a stage. It's just bad to surprise paywall it. They should have said that's the deal back in January so people know what they're signing up for. And I do think that they they have the argument of the case being said, well, we said it was a character pass. We didn't say that it was a, you know what I'm saying, this was gonna include stages or whatever, whatever. So it's like legally, I guess that they are, you know what I'm saying, you know, within their rights or grounds or whatever, but it's like, you know what you're not slick we're not dumb and you're not dumb you know what you did by doing this this way you know what i mean like we're like we're not maybe some of us are but most of us are not 11 years old you know we're not kids you know what i'm saying uh roman jelly says i thought it was a bug too i would be more than more than happy to be wrong but at this point with them giving it a price it seems to be real um and yeah this person saying it's a bug it's it's not a bug. It's it's not a bug. Enough time has passed. And uh, Harada did make a statement about all of this that we will take a look at in a moment. Um, but we'll save that one for the final tweet that we take a look at. Uh, we also have this tweet from Koenji who says, even though the season pass is described as a character pass, Tekken not giving you the stage associated with the character feels underhand. Hopefully this will get changed because this is not it. And I agree. And again, like the stage is gorgeous. You know what I mean? And one of the things that you can ask for and that benefits the community and everybody a lot is just transparency and honesty. You know what I mean? It's, and this just feels a bit dishonest, does it not? You know what I mean? And again, I'm making this video because this is, it's a relevant topic of conversation. Obviously a lot of these tweets are getting a lot of engagement. It's been a big conversation so much so that Harada himself addressed it as I previously mentioned, and we'll get to that. So it's not that I think, oh, this is the end of the world. This is such a huge, massive deal. Cause I don't want anyone to think that like, I'm trying to blow this out of proportion. Um, and I hate that I even have like, constantly feel like I'm covering my ass by making statements like that. Cause you know, cause it just feels like if you, whatever, man, the, the day and age that we live on, on the internet, I'm, I try to be so careful about how I word things and how I present things and articulate it and, and whatnot. And, and then it still gets whatever that I digress. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but there are a lot of people I've seen making tweets like this, by the way, where it says, I have a question for all Tekken 8 ultimate edition owners, but do you know what you purchased? It's not that you can't read, but that you don't feel like it. And this just comes off as, kind of like an like you're just being an asshole and Koenji replies uh very articulately that's the point of this tweet also it doesn't make selling the stages outside of your seasonal pass any better and it wasn't communicated well if it was people would have brought this up when they announced the pass ages ago and that's the thing as well if people and again i guess you could to some degree chalk this up to people not being uh as as attentive to detail when they purchased this game, this product, this pass or whatever, whatever edition of the game that they bought. If it was described as a character pass, if they had clearly communicated that any additional stages would not be included in the season pass or that season uh, pass holders would not get these stages and they would be sold separately. That is something that would have been a point of conversation that the community probably would have spoken up about and been like, hey, we don't think that's right. Or at the very least, we would have been understanding and we would have known instead of kind of feeling like it was more something that we were blindsided by. Uh, and then, of course, FDX chimes in on the situation and gives his opinion. And I believe he put out a video this morning. I think he's still uh, out of town right now, but he still managed to get a video of no. I, 
I don't know if anybody in the FGC is working as hard as that dude is right now, man. Especially when it comes to the content game. He's, he's killing it. Nothing but respect for Fee. Um, but he goes on to say, uh, they've said that they want the game to last a really long time, like a live service game. Think of the reputation damage this will do on top of previous damage. If it's not the move, it feels so short-sighted. The player base is already small. The community is already angry and word will travel fast, i.e. it'll be harder to attract new players. And then I believe he has a follow-up rep reply that reads, the Tekken team has shown that they are very passionate about making games to the point of severe crunch and overworking. Interfacing with the community is a very good faith effort and is a rare occurrence in the modern gaming era. I am curious what is happening higher up at Namco. And I 100% agree. And in fact, I should go ahead and hit this with a retweet. You can see I had these tweets bookmarked because I was saving them to talk about in this video. Um, yeah, I don't really necessarily have an issue with the game being live service and this being a game that they want to maybe support for the next five to 10-ish years. Maybe not 10 years, that's a long time. It felt like a really long time between Tekken, Tekken 7 and Tekken 8. But, but who knows? You know, if the game is good and fun and does well and they, they support it properly and everything like that and things are communicated, like this could be a, a, a great play. But this move in particular, <laughs> I don't think is. We're already at a point right now where people feel like companies are just constantly doing things purely for the sake of making a dollar. And trust me, I understand. Business is business. These companies are here to make money. I am fully understanding of that. It, it's not lost on me that a lot of these companies care more about our, our dollar, our, our money than they care about us as consumers or as people or as gamers. But you need some sort of balance and some sort of understanding that if you don't treat your customers with some semblance of respect <laughs> and some semblance of honesty or what is perceived to be as honesty, you're just going to lose out in the long term. So like FDX said, this is something that feels very short sighted. It's like, okay, we do this little cash grab. We sell this DLC stage uh, exclusively uh, as, as a separate thing that you have to buy and we'll make more money. It's like, okay, but like you do that and maybe you do make a little bit of extra money off of that than you would have ordinarily if you included with the season pass, but now everybody's pissed off. Tekken fans are pissed off. Uh, this doesn't look inviting for new players who are looking at this and going like, mm, that seems kind of scummy. I don't really want to support that business practice. So I'm not going to pick the game up. And then you have other people, whether they're fighting in players or not, looking at that, seeing us talking about it, seeing how you're moving, how you're acting, how you're responding, and then making fun of us and the game and then also not buying the game or supporting it or speaking highly of it, which in turn, again, is long term harmful to all of us. <laughs> Bandai Namco, Tekken, the community, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, as far as the player base already being small, I think he means relatively speaking, like obviously there are thousands of players playing Tekken 8, um, but compared to some other games, and especially when it comes to other genres, yeah, Tekken is far from being like one of the biggest games in the world, you know what I mean? And uh, like he said, the community is already angry. I still see videos to this day of people uploading videos talking about the business practices and some of the decision making when it comes to Tekken 8. And I understand that their job's not easy, <laughs> but I do feel like at times they make it harder for themselves. And the, the word is definitely traveling fast. Every single tweet that I've seen right here has thousands of views, hundreds of likes and retweets, you know what I'm saying? So like it, this has been a very hot, hot topic right now that is only spreading more and more like wildfire. That being said, we have one more tweet that I want to take a look at and it is a statement that comes directly from Katsuhiro Harada himself, which as you guys know, is a producer of Tekken. And his statement reads, I understand that the community has some questions about the release of this stage DLC. As the person in charge of the second franchise, I apologize. Okay, I'm listening. It was made clear from the beginning, I haven't read this myself yet, so we're reading this together for the first time. Uh, it was made clear from the beginning that the year one pass, season pass, would not include stages. I don't think that was made clear, and maybe maybe it was. I Maybe if I go back to a certain Tekken talk, maybe Michael Murray or Harada stated that at some point. Maybe that was written in the fine print somewhere under the character pass of the season pass. Maybe it was. It's just that historically, that's just not how it has been. And uh, maybe maybe me mentioning some of the things I've, I've, I said before about, oh, if this was been communicated properly and you guys can do the research, you know what I'm saying, and prove me right or wrong, I don't know. I am i hadn't, I haven't looked into it that deeply myself. But regardless, uh, we will not include stages. But even so, when the Lydia Sobieska DLC was released, the Seaside Resort stage was a free update. Case in point, though. You know what I mean? Like, even in this game, we already had an example where brand new character released, brand new stage released alongside her, season pass holders got the stage for free. You know what I mean? Uh, and in this case, uh, even though the additional story mode, which should have had the highest development cost, is a free update, but the Genmaji stage was sold separately, which I just don't really understand from a logic standpoint. It's like, yeah, like if anything, you should have charged for the story update, and I, that, I would be understanding of that. And I get it, stages cost things too. You know what I'm saying? That stages aren't just free to develop and 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 create they they take time they take manpower resources money like i i, I get that but moving on 
Uh, as a result, the release ended up being one that was not well understood or accepted by everyone. At least the almost all community was expecting a pattern similar to that of Lydia. Reasonably so, in my opinion. There are various reasons for this, but I will talk about the background uh, to this uh, as an individual in order to increase transparency to some extent, which I appreciate. The Tekken project is divided into two companies, a game development studio and a publisher that is responsible for game sales. At the time of the development and release of Tekken 7, the development and publishing companies were not separate. As some of you may know, I moved to the development studio side a few years ago, and I've been focusing on maximizing the quality of the content, tech, graphics, etc. The development side and the publishing side each have their own roles, and there are differences in the way they think and the responsibilities. I, who should be the one to act as a bridge between the two, have not been able to properly participate in the publishing sales a decision making process for as a result i think that there were parts of the process that did not take the tech and community's opinion into account so this would kind of explain to some extent uh the disconnect here you know what i mean um i i think that this this might as, as far as i can tell kind of answer the question is like who's making these decisions is it the tech and team or is it like someone at bandai namco which i assume is you know the publish the you know the ones they're talking he's referring to when he says the publishing side and everything like that um so Harada and Michael Murray, I guess, were not the ones who said, hey, let's sell this stage separately, uh, sell this stage separately. Like what I'm gathering from this is that this this uh, this decision was not made by them, nor was Harada even included in the in the process of it. He says, I think I failed to create an organizational structure that would allow me to oversee things beyond my own position. One of my roles was to listen to the opinions of the community and reflect them not only in the content, but also in the out game. But I was clearly becoming passive worrying about the relationship between companies and not exercising my role. Uh, from now on, I will review this structure and change it to one that values the community as it did in the past. Thank you. Um, which is a statement that I like what he said. Uh, taking it at face value, it seems to me like basically, so if I were to summarize this, he, he's going, hey, I hear you guys. You guys aren't really happy with the decision to sell the state separately and it not being included in the season pass. And I kind of understand why, because when Lydia came out, a brand new stage released alongside her. And if you were a season pass holder, you got the stage for free. So everyone just expected that to just be the norm. That was not the norm for the game. And the, the decision was made to release this stage as a separate paid DLC. I was not involved in the, the decision-making process for that, but there are things that I could have been doing better on my part to make sure that the opinion of the community was taken more into account and that we were more considerate uh, when uh, releasing the content for this game. So he is taking some of the blame. It looks like some level of accountability saying that it wasn't my decision to do this, but I could have done more. I could have been better. And I apologize for that. And I will be better in the future. Excuse me. Will be better in the future. Uh, I am a believer that actions speak louder than words, but I do believe that words are important. I think it is really good that he put out this statement. I like what he said in the statement and we'll see if that actually is the case moving forward. I think for now, personally, I'm still going to hold off on buying the stage, even though I think it's a really cool stage and I really like it and I really want to play on it. I'm going to hold off on buying it until I see some sort of proof or action being taken or something that shows that he meant what he said here and that something is going to change uh, moving forward. Whether or not you agree with that or you want to participate in that is on you. Uh, it does suck, though, because like, when it comes to like DLCs and the business practices and everything like that, Tekken is a fighting game and fighting games are very competitive. And in this game, again, talking about community already being angry and all these conversations about, you know, monetization and DLC, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's very common for people to practice against certain characters in order to get better in those matchups. And a, a current topic of conversation that is still ongoing is how in Tekken, and this exists in other games as well, but in Tekken, you cannot lab or properly practice against characters that you have not purchased for or that you have not purchased. If you don't have that DLC character, you can't practice against them and you can't even access your replays, which is kind of crazy uh, fighting against that character. And while I don't think it's on exactly the same level, it's still kind of up there. Stages matter a lot in Tekken because Tekken is a 3D game. There are combos, situations and everything like that that you can't practice or lab out or everything like that because you don't own the stage. If you don't own the stage, you can't play on it and you can't practice on it. Um, stages are not equal. It, un unlike a 2D game where like stages are like kind of mostly cosmetic and the backgrounds are all different, but you're still just on this 2D plane. In Tekken, you have different shapes, different sizes, wall carry, everything like that, uh, side walls, you know what I'm saying? Like the, it matters a lot for how you actually play the game. And if you're somebody who's taken the game to some competitive degree, you could argue that if you're that serious about getting better at the game and everything like that, you're probably somebody who's gonna own the season pass or buy all the DLCs and the stages and everything like that. And I think there's some weight to that argument, but I also think that 
you know, some people may want to get better at the game and they want to do practicing and everything like that, but they're not some top player. They're not some content creator. They're not somebody who's got a ton of money to throw around or whatever. So they can't justify or at the, at the time afford buying every single character or buying the season pass or the stages or whatever. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not out here criticizing anybody for how they spend their money or how much money they have uh, to spend on video games. But my point is that being able to access the stage matters more in Tekken than it does uh, <laughs> in some other games. So yeah, it's, I'm not putting it on the exact same level as not being able to like lab against a certain character, but it does matter. So I want to see the proof of this statement right here about how he's going to review this structure and change it to one that values the community as it did in the past. Um, I'm not expecting, I'd, look, it would be cool, right? Reading this, reacting to all this, talking about this, I could see some people saying, well, hey, the only way to right this wrong is for you to refund everybody who bought the stage and release the stage as free. Take it down from being able to be purchased separately, release it for free. I don't expect anything like that. Um, th that would be welcome, but I don't know. I need to see another stage get dropped and it be free or something. You know what I'm saying? Like I, we, we need to see some sort of action be taken. I don't have the answers off the top of my head on what the actions are, but I would like to believe in the Tekken team. Maybe not as much in <laughs> some of the, the business higher ups, but in, in, when it comes to like Michael Murray and, and Harada, I, I would, I would like to believe in them. So I guess we'll see. Um, I don't know what he's going to do. Time will tell. That's pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to discuss in today's video. I just thought it would be a worthwhile discussion since it had been just a hot topic on Twitter. Probably something that I should have tackled even earlier. Um, as you guys know, I've been I've been preoccupied with other things, and so it's been a, a long day. I woke up super late and I had some other things to take care of, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Uh, I think tomorrow maybe I might upload the Tekken story because I do have the access to the story and everything like that. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, I still like this game. I want to support this game. I want to keep playing this game. It's not something that I upload or play every single day, but I still have a lot of love for Tekken. It's still my favorite fighting game out right now. I love and support this game and this community. So yeah, I want, I want the best for it. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want nothing but the best for Tekken. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all those content that I'm bringing you. With all that being said, that's pretty much all I have today. Remember, nothing can happen to swing the bat. Later.